So I'd like to share with you yet another idea that I hope you find fascinating from a new book, Responsibility Rebellion, co-authored by the lovely Mrs. Chinsia Dubois. And this is that we all live in this ongoing, constant state of comparison in life. And by this what I mean is that um, consciously or unconsciously, we're pretty much all comparing ourselves to other people in some way all of the time. Now just to give a little bit of context for this idea, I'm going to share with you a quick story. Um, back in 2008, 2009, I was living in a place called Queenstown in the South Island of New Zealand, one of the most beautiful parts of the world. And I ended up one weekend being asked to a barbecue at a friend's house. Now this friend's house um, was, from my perspective, absolutely stunning. It was um, sitting or it was built on one side of the south, sa the south facing side of Queenstown Hill. Um, with views of the Remarkables mountain range, snow-capped mountains, a glacier-filled lake. One of the most scenic views I think I've, I've, ever, I've ever had. It's absolutely stunning. And the reason why I tell you this is because at this barbecue, I met some really interesting people. One couple in particular who lived about three or four houses up from this couple who were hosting a barbecue on the, on the same street. And um, I got into this conversation. They were telling me about the rich couple at the end of the road, who just moved in. Now, this was a couple, I'd, I was able to see the, the house that they lived in from the balcony that I was standing on. It was four levels deep. There was a double carport, barbecue area, mini salt water pool, all this kind of thing. Um, you know, home cinema. And back then, I wasn't in a particularly financially affluent place. Let's just kind of put it that way. And as I was kind of looking at them, thinking, my goodness, I would do anything to live in a house like yours. They were telling me about the rich couple at the end of the street because they had you know, a three-car carport and a double barbecue area and they had a long drive and they had about three or four additional bedrooms and a few extra you know, internal bathrooms and they had a spa room inside of the house. Um, and I was thinking, my goodness, this is like a whole new level of life. And I'm not, I'm not telling you the story because I'm superficial or because I'm speaking to your superficiality. It's not that at all. Um, it's just to highlight this idea that we all go through life sometimes um, comparing ourselves to people. And it's very, very rare that we will compare ourselves consciously to those that have less than us. We usually find ourselves, you know, comparing ourselves to those that have more than us, kind of like the rich neighbours of the road, or those who have evolved a little bit further in their career or in business, or who are a bit more established. And it can be possible sometimes to become a little bit envious, can't it? You know, of people that we perceive to have done really well in life, kind of like, you know, we admire and we're envious of the results that people get sometimes without always being clear on the years of hard work that it may have taken to get or generate those results. I remember going back in 2010, I was part of a four-man team, and we were commissioned to take over one tonne's worth of medical food supplies and medical aid rations over to Haiti. And this was after that devastating earthquake. Now, when we first arrived in Haiti, there were still aftershocks and kind of tremors going on. Now, I'd never seen anything like this. My background was actually in the military. So, you know, having spent time in Iraq, you see a level of man-made devastation. But then, you know, when I witnessed the aftermath of this earthquake, this was devastation of a whole new level. We're talking, you know, hundreds of thousands of people had been killed within moments, crushed. And an entire nation had been devastated. And we'd gone over to take these medical food rations and uh, medical supplies to an orphanage where some of the children who had been orphaned were, were now getting shipped and ferried. And the reason why I tell you this is not making myself out to be some great humanitarian, um, but it's actually, um, it actually really helped me to understand this idea. Um, and this is about this state of comparison we find ourselves in. When we compare ourselves to those that we perceive to be greater than us, better than us, who have more than us, we will sometimes feel angry or resentful or bitter. Sometimes we might end up beating ourselves up and you know, stepping into a place of sadness or depression or guilt or shame or something like this, right? But what I'm saying is it just doesn't end well. If we can humble ourselves to actually identify some people in 
that we know in the world somewhere who actually have significantly less than us, who are perhaps just not anywhere near as fortunate as us. It can actually set us up to just become more appreciative of what we actually have. All right, now come on in the self-improvement world. Um, you know, there are entire, the entire books written about, you know, be gratitude, be grateful for yourself, and that will just heal your life. No, I won't heal your life, it won't fix your life, it won't make all your woes and all your issues disappear, all right? But it can set you off in a bit of a healthier footing, all right? Um, the reason why some people never cross the start line in life towards pursuing their goals and progressing towards their, their dreams, their aspirations, is because they feel intimidated by those people who have accomplished greater things than them. Um, this state of inferiority complex sometimes kicks into play. And I'm just speaking to human beings here. We all have this. This is applied psychology, all right? Basic experiences that we all have they don't need to be medicalized, they don't need to be diagnosed, they just need to be understood and moved beyond. And to be honest with you, this has been my goal for you, you know, in writing this book, just to help you better understand yourself from the inside out so you can move forward, make wiser, more well-informed decisions about not just how it is that you relate to yourself, but also how you relate to other people, how you relate to the world at large, and just give a little bit more reflective consideration as to the role that you want to play um, in this world of ours moving forward, for better or for worse, right? None of us want to leave this world behind in a worse state than what it was when we first went into it. We all hope to leave behind some sort of legacy. But in fairness, it's not until we take full responsibility for actually driving this legacy that we're <laughs> that we're ever going to accomplish much in life. So listen, just another idea, I want to introduce you uh, to some of the key concepts that I've proposed for Responsibility Rebellion. Um, if you do invest in the book, I do hope that you enjoy it and I'll look forward to hopefully also hearing your feedback.